Hi there, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 369. It is Monday, the 21st of June. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph, and did I already say welcome to 90% Knitting? I think I probably started with that. Boy, we're off to a great start. Um, happy summer solstice. I know it was he yesterday here in the eastern, well I guess probably all of the US, um, but it's today like over in Europe, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the 21st, it was the 20th here this year. Anyway, happy summer solstice. I hope you had a wonderful time celebrating if you did and if you didn't and it's not a big deal for you then just yay it's summer, right? And it's warm, it's beautiful outside but again it's very breezy so I'm in here but look where I am guys I have not been in this spot in such a long time this is the porch room where I always used to record Bill had to go into the office today and so I thought you know what I'm gonna move stuff I actually had to move things to sit here um, but I did it and like I have the camera situated just so you can't see the whole big table of Bill's work stuff sitting here Anyway, it's good to be in this little spot. Just a few little intro announcements before we jump into the knitting. Um, I just want to remind you that the pre-orders for the Winter Magical um, holiday countdown sets are up in the shop. I think I am going to close them at the end of June. Um, I've gotten quite a few, but if you're if you're still thinking about it or you've been on the fence, you still have until through June 30th, my time. That would be Eastern time um, to place your order. Lots of options. I'm not going to go through them all again, but you'll find all that information in the shop listing for the Winter Magical countdown sets and or braids or skeins if you just want that. So that is on the calendar. Um, the other th one thing I wanted to let you know up front. Last time I said I thought I was going to be doing a shop update this weekend, like this Friday. I'm not, and I'll talk more about that later, but I did want to let you know that I do have the next shop update scheduled for July 9th, which is a Friday. So obviously I will be recording before then, but I just want to let you know in case you were hoping that it would be this weekend, it won't be, it will be next week or in two weekends. Um, however, what's going on right now, and if you're already following me on social media, you might have already seen this, but I am doing a summer solstice coupon right now. Um, I posted it on social media on Saturday at noon and it was running all the way from then through the end of today um, for 20% off. If you're on my newsletter though, if you're subscribed to my newsletter, you got advanced access to that, early access starting on Friday morning. Um, however, if you aren't on my newsletter yet, why not? Uh, I don't send that many out, honest. Um, just, you know, a few months you know, usually not more than an average of one a week, so it's safe. Um, yeah, if you ha didn't get the newsletter or didn't open the newsletter or um, didn't see the social media, Instagram or Facebook post about it, I'm going to go ahead and just for podcast viewers, I'm going to extend the coupon through the end of Wednesday, which will be June 23rd. So I'm not going to advertise that anywhere else though. So only you guys watching the podcast will know that you can still use the coupon through the end of Wednesday. And so the coupon code is summer solstice 20 and that is good for 20% off almost everything in the shop except the winter magical countdown sets. Um, any, any of the winter magical items can't use it on that gift certificates, and mini skeins. Those are the only three things that that coupon is not good for. Good for anything else, including sale items, things that are already marked down. It's good on like pre-orders, you know, other pre-orders or die to order items. You can use it for that. So anyway, I just wanted to make that offer to you guys in case you haven't seen the coupon yet, um, but would like to take advantage of it because there's still a lot of really good things in the shop. Now we'll get into the knitting, shall we? I have finished things to show you. Oh, oh, don't fall. Gosh, hang on. This room is so dangerous. Oh, I was gonna, okay, I've got bags inside of bags. I have 
finished socks. Did I say that already? Boy. And I did not prepare by putting them on the sock blocker. So let me just tell you. Oh, this is a really attractive look. Okay. Um, my first set of finished socks are my fungi pie socks. So that one, this is the second sock. This is the first one. I'm going to be fancy and put both of them on blockers to show you. Um, so yeah, I got these finished, which is impressive because it's only been a week since I talked to you last. Here you go. So this was the first one. I can tell just because of the striping pattern. So the first one, second one, they are all done. And because it's a pie striping colorway, a single skein of it, they don't match. There's no way to make a pie skein match. Um, only exception being the make your own pie dyed orders, custom orders that I have in the shop now. You can order two twin skeins and those will match. But anyway, <laughs> that's not the case with this. So Fungi Pie, this was my pie day colorway this year and you've seen these before, but I'm really happy to have them done. These are quite tall for socks for me um, and I did do a two by one rib. Um, US ones, which is my normal for socks. And I think I made the comment the last time I showed you, I thought, oh, you know, these would be fairly decent socks for Bill because he likes his socks tall and he likes ribbed cuffs. Um, but I thought, mm, he may not like this. Number one, because the stripes don't match and he does kind of like to ma have stripe, matchy stripey socks. But number two, because of this pink, he's not a fan of pink. So once these were done, I showed them to him and he said, oh, those are nice. I said, yeah, you know, I thought you might like them because they're ribbed and they're tall. He's like, I'm not going to wear them. They have pink in them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was my thought. So I have a nice tall pair of ribbed socks for this coming winter, which is nice. So that is my first finished object. Um, I don't think I had anything else to tell you. This is my Mountain Tweed BFL base. So the Tweedy base. And that's about it. It's just my standard... Vanilla sock done with a two by one rib. Heel cat, heel flap, guess it. Nothing else exciting to tell you about that pair except that I really, really like them. And I'm not at all sad that Bill declined them. So, okay, the second pair of socks that I have to show you, these do actually match really, really well. Um, better than I was expecting them to, actually. I don't know why, but sometimes when you try to match socks, stripes, it doesn't always go great, but this time it did. And these are a little closer to how tall I usually make my socks. And these are my summer stripe socks. So, yay! Look how well those match. See, that straps, they, they line up pretty well, even on the heel. Now, I did do some stripe management um, in the heel area. So after I did my heel flap and my heel turn, I broke the yarn and wound it off to get back to the beginning of this yellow stripe um, so that the whole front of the sock will stay in the striping pattern. So I did end up with pretty much almost a full repeat because as you can see this starts with yellow and there's only a little bit of the green so I had to wind the whole right way off until I got back to the yellow. This is my 2021 Down Cellar Studios Splash Pad Party exclusive colorway which is also still available in the shop. Um, so is Fungi Pie. Did I mention that? These are both available in the shop as dye to orders Although I think there may be some in-stock skeins, at least of Fungi Pie. I have some in-stock stock skeins of this colorway, but I don't know that I have them listed yet. So yeah, this is a finished pair of vanilla socks. Um, this is, you know, kind of a standard pair for me. I did do the ribbing a little longer than I usually would do. I usually only do about nine rounds of ribbing. I don't know how many I did here, but it's definitely more than nine. It's probably close to like 12, I would say. But then again, heel flap, gusset. Um, and like I said, I wound off to get to the correct stripe to continue the striping pattern. And the toes even match. See? Really matchy. So, um, yeah. I am also participating in the Down Cellar Studio Splash Pad Party um, this year. So I'm not just a sponsor, but I'm taking part. So I was able to use both of those pairs of socks as finished objects. They counted. Um, and my hexi wrap that I showed you last week, 
was also able to be counted as a finished object. If you if you're not familiar, Down Cellar Studio is an audio podcast, although Jen is doing video components of it lately as well, um, run by Jen, who's Boston Jen on Ravelry and Boston Jen One on Instagram, I think. Um, she runs this and she runs the pigskin party during football season. And her events are always wonderful. Um, I don't usually take part in them though. I usually sponsor, but then I, I've just never taken part, but I took part in the pigskin party last year and now I'm doing the splash pad party and it's really fun and you don't have to be on Ravelry to participate in those events with her. She has everything on her website. I've linked it in the past. I'll link it again in the show notes, but if you want like a really low key kind of knit along to do this summer, check that out. It's never too late to join that. So I don't think there's anything else for me to tell you about either of those pairs of socks. Um, Let's move on to my works in progress. I showed you last week that I had cast on the Sophronia shawl by Sarah Jordan, and I have made a little bit more progress on it. Um, it's taking me, at this point, about 20 minutes to get through a repeat. I mean, I know it doesn't look that long, but yeah, it, it's taken me that long. So anyway, this is... Um, a really fun, pretty mindless garter stitch pattern. Um, you just have to pay attention to where you're doing your increases. And then after every eighth row, you're doing a bobble where you're putting in a bead. So some of my beads stand out better than others, but you can see them there. The bobbles are quite tiny. They're not big obtrusive bobbles, so they're kind of fun. Um, yeah, so I, again, not a whole lot to tell you about this. The yarn is Tempting You Yarns, which I had gotten in a fiber share swap package a couple years ago. Um, this is the Yuso Sparkly Base, because it is a sparkly base. It's like a gold Stellina. And I think it's gold. Maybe it's silver. I can't tell now. <laughs> it looks different on different colors. At any rate, it's sparkly. And the colorway is rainbow bright. So it's fun, it's bright, it's a happy color. The I'm using US 4 needles, which is down a size from what the pattern recommends. Um, that just works best for me on fingering weight shawls. And the beads were just some random beads that I had around, I believe they're the 6-0 beads. I looked it up and I'm pretty sure that's what they are. I don't really know beads and bead sizes super well. All I know is that they are the size that has a hole large enough for me to get my really tiny little crochet hook through. <laughs> so that's why I'm using them. So yeah, that is that project. It's coming along. And then the other day I was looking, actually this bag had been on my bottom shelf of my little bookcase that I have next to my bed. And I was doing cleaning and organizing this past weekend, which I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but in this, this bag, I had a bunch of yarn in here that I had pulled out, I think last fall when I started participating in the pigskin party. And it was all yarn that was from, um, other sponsors because you get extra points if you use sponsor yarn in the projects that you do for Jen's events. And so I'd sort of forgotten that I had it down there and that that's what was in it. And so I pulled it on. I'm like, Ooh, like I could use this for splash pad party. Cause a lot of the same sponsors sponsor, you know, both events. And so I chose to use a whole bunch of minis <laughs> and I have this in my fancy aluminum foil pan here. And there are also beads involved in this one. I have them in multiple sets because these beads, although I think they're the same size, some of the holes are a little, like, I would say one in five beads, the crochet hook actually fits through. So I went through the other day and, like, pulled out ones that definitely worked so that I can, you know, grab them faster. So this is my yes tub of beads, and this is my definitely no tub of beads, and these are the ones that I have not yet figured out if they're... Which, which bin they should go in. <laughs> so anyway, I had two mini sets, 
plus a sock set, so a full skein plus that had a mini with it, from Legacy Fiber Arts. And that is, um, okay, Legacy Fiber Arts is Chelsea and Sue. You might know them from Legacy Fiber Arts or from the, they have a podcast that they do together. Chelsea also has a Patreon, um, which I support her on Patreon, and she does videos through that. Anyway, they have a yarn company, which I know you know because everybody knows <laughs> Legacy Fiber Arts. But I had all these minis, and they, both sets of minis plus the sock set, really kind of went together. And I thought, you know, I could make something with all of this, but I, I couldn't find a pattern that was really yelling out to me. And I didn't really, I wanted to do a crochet pattern. Um, and so I, I was looking for something and I, I was had so, uh, an idea in my mind of what I kind of wanted to do, but I couldn't find anything. So I finally decided I was just going to sort of wing it. And recently I've showed you a couple of little pouches that I've made, remember? And I... I'm kind of following the same thing that I did for the pouches, except instead of having them closed, it's an open tube. So this is what I started to do. I chained 100 stitches, and then I went and I picked up, oops, I picked up all of those stitches. Okay, what did I just do here? Now I'm pulling stitches out. I don't want to do that. Um, I picked up and did a, sing a single crochet into each of those stitches to make my foundation row or round because then I joined it in the round. It's a little wibbly wobbly. It's not the greatest job of, of starting something that way. But I decided I'm just going to keep going and keep going around. So it's just a spiral, the same way I was doing those pouches, just again without it being closed on the bottom. So I did about six or seven rounds of single crochet down here. And then I switched, and from here to here, you can see, I did single crochet through the back loop, which is one of my favorite things to do. And in fact, that's often how I do those pouches that I make, so that you kind of get this ridge that runs around it. It almost, it almost looks like the chain is facing. It's not. To do that, you would have to do, I think, through the back post which I've done on other things, but this is just through the back loop. And when I say back loop, I'm not even sure if this is proper crochet terminology, but like, so here's your, your top row. So this is the last crochet row I did, right? So if you're doing regular single crochet, I think you'd normally be going through both of those, right? But for this section here, what I did was I only went through this back leg, like, through there. Can you see that? So that's what I did. I don't, again, I don't know if that's the proper terminology for what I'm doing, but whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I like how it looks. So I'm really just sort of randomly switching back and forth between those two stitches. I mean, it's the same stitch, just done a different way. So, you know, single crochet, single crochet through the back loop, and now I'm back up here on the single crochet. I'll do that for a while and then switch back. Um, here is the yarn that I'm working with. Okay, well here's the single skein. This is the full skein from the sock set. This is Tiny Dancer, and this is all on their Steel Toes base, which is a 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon. And this is the little mini that came with Tiny Dancer. Now, this is the only mini out of all of these, actually it's the only yarn out of all of these that I'm going to show you that is a semi-solid. I may not end up using this one for this particular project. It kind of depends on how, like, how long it is by the time I get to the end. But here are the other ones. So those are, let's see, and, and this. This is my current one that I'm working on. I don't have these in the right order, and at this point I don't know which ones were in which set. So I'm not even going to try to tell you. One of them was called Autumn Leaves, I think. This is the Tiny Dancer sock set. I don't know where my tag is for the other one, but yeah. And then the other one was GKSO January. I know this was some sort of... It was inspired, I'm pretty sure Chelsea said it was inspired by the Great British Bake Off. 
so maybe this is the great knitting skein off i don't know i don't remember what it was called but i did purchase that through their website i think the the other mini set and the the sock set i got at when i like a, at a show like a, a needles up show at some point i'm pretty sure that's when i got it i don't know whatever it doesn't matter um, the other thing I'm doing though, as I showed you, I have beads for it and I'm just randomly inserting one bead each round at different places. So they're all over the place and I don't know how well they're going to really, really show up. Um, but I just thought it would be fun to add a little bit of bling and I've got beads that I don't use for very many things. So I thought, well, why not use them? <laughs> so Anyway, so I'm calling this my crocheted tube cowl. I am going to make this as long as I can get it with all of these yarns and including this one possibly. I don't know how much of this skein will end up getting used. I'm going to put some of this in between each of the other colors. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to make it as long as I can. And then when I get to the very end, I will graft the two edge ends together although it won't really be grafting because I didn't use a provisional on this I'll close it up somehow so it'll be a tube cowl <laughs> an infinity tube cowl um, that's all I can tell you about it right now I'm having fun with it because I, I'm really enjoying having some crochet going all the time and I know I have other crochet projects like I have that that cardigan, that granny stripes cardigan. Um, I've put that away officially in hibernation for right now because I need to get a C hook. I don't think I have any C hooks. I use, I'm using a D for this. Go fig, you know, surprise. I use D hooks, it seems, for almost everything I crochet with fingering weight yarn. Um, but I cannot find any C hooks. I may have one somewhere, but I really like pointiness of this one and I think this brand which is Bryspun I think they do make a C but they don't go any lower than C with these palm wood uh, hooks and I was all over Etsy and all over online the other day trying to find some nice wooden hooks that went down into smaller sizes because if I'm going to spend the money and have to pay for the shipping, I'd like to get more than one. And I have a lot of hooks that are bigger, like D and up. Um, but I don't have many smaller ones. So if you know of any, if you have a good reputable... I, and I know there's like the ones that have the cushiony handle, the clover ones, and... I think there's another brand that makes them. I'm not a huge fan of those. Matter of fact, I... Like, this is about as fat as I want my crochet hooks to be. I'm really comfortable with these. Same way with the, um, where is the metal hook? Here it is. So this tiny little metal hook. Like, I have no problem working with a hook that's just this tiny. Um, I, I like this. I like metal hooks like this. And I don't like the big fat hooks. I did see, what brand... Pearls. I don't know if those are wooden or if they're some sort of a, a resin or I don't know what they're made out of but they're really big and fat and I I don't like that so I don't know if you have any recommendations for a nice smaller you know handled wooden hook that goes down into like C and B I would love to know about it okay so that is my new crochet project that's on the hook and then this morning I started another project that is a weaving project. I really wanted to do some weaving, um, actually in another, not in that bag I just showed you that had all of the yarn, but in another bin in my yarn room I had some other yarn that I actually purchased during the pigskin party last year and then never got to use during the pigskin party, so I'm trying to use it now. And both of these skeins that are on these two, um, shuttles I gotta get the word stick shuttles these are some yarn from knitters brewing company and I'm just realizing now that I put the wrong company name in my project page 
<laughs> no wonder I could not find this base. I, I put something out, some other brew. You know, oh my gosh, I have to go fix that before I link to it. Anyway, Knitter's Brewing Company, Wendy, she always is a sponsor for the pigskin party and the splash pad party. And this is her Sockaholic Brewski. Um, and this is the Luxury Worsted and the purpley color. This is called Framboise or Frambois. I don't know. It's French. I should know how to pronounce it, but I apparently don't. And then this one is Turcran Pie. I think it was Turcran Pie or Cran Tur Pie. Turcran Pie. Um, obviously, these were sort of Thanksgiving ish time or Christmas time, like that kind of year colorways and I just thought they were so so pretty um, and I love weaving with a semi-solid and a variegated yarn together and so that's what I'm doing and I originally wasn't going to do this with a plan I was going to kind of do a random pattern but then I ended up doing a pattern pattern <laughs> and so now while I'm doing the weft I'm also trying to kind of stick with a pattern pattern I'm not sure how well it's going to go but um it's, it's rolled on there pretty well right at the moment, but you can kind of see what I've got going. So it'll be kind of a big plaid. But I'm enjoying it. You know, I've been wanting to get my loom warped for some time now, and it just, I wasn't having the time to do it, and it was frustrating me. And so I was really glad I took the time this morning and just did it, because it doesn't take that long. I know what I'm doing now, and this is a small loom. This is the Ashford 10-inch... Um, sample it loom. I still have not assembled my 24 inch Ashford loom. It's beyond ridiculous at this point. So this is my weaving project. This is going to be a table runner. That is my plan for this. Um, really, how much difference is there between a table runner and a scarf? Like, is there any? I think they double pretty, pretty well, other than maybe width. You can have narrower scarves than table runners, but this will make a nice width table runner, I think, and I'm going to give it to one of my girlfriends for Christmas. That is my plan. Look at me thinking ahead for Christmas gifts. Isn't that just crazy pants? What else? I think that's the only projects that I worked on since I talked to you last week. Um, I did not start either of those tops that I told you I was going to make for Emma. I did get some really good advice from a viewer about how to prep the Euroflax and soften it up a bit. Um, it was, I think, one of the first comments on last week's video. So if you wanted to read that technique that she talks about using, check that out, that comment out. That would be really helpful. I'm going to try that with the Euroflax before I use it. Um, and I also did not work any more on that hybrid top that I was making out of the staple linen top and the taloned top. Um, I really think I'm going to need to rip it out and start it over um, in a smaller gauge, like going down a needle size, and I just haven't done that yet. So I did work on organizing things over the weekend. I mentioned that before, and I did put some projects away because they've been just sort of languishing in my bedroom, and so I technically hibernated them to my bin on my shelves in the office and put them in the hibernating bin so they're out of the way, including Ramona, who I feel guilty about hibernating, but like I'm just not in the mood to work on that right now, so it's going to hibernate for a while. Okay, so that's it for the crafts. Let's move on a little bit. Um, the 2021 Nature Make Alongs, still going on. Fauna, which is the second um, installment of the Nature Make Alongs this year, is ending at the end of this month. So July, or I'm sorry, June 30th will be the end of Fauna. So you have 10 days to finish your Fauna esque projects and get them posted. And submit your not really get them posted because I'm not having I don't have a finished object thread for these um, there's an ongoing just chatter thread that you're welcome to post your pictures in if you'd like to or you can post them in the thread on the fiber nymph dye works blog um, but you do need to submit your finished object form um, in order to have that be entered and count um, so you need to do that by the 30th and then we'll be off for the month of July there's a break in the make along um, and then we'll pick up again in August. And the theme for August and September will be C. 
and that would be anything water related. So it doesn't have to technically be just a sea. It can be anything water related, um, oceans, seas, streams, ponds, lakes, um, rivers. It can also be the plants or the animals that live in these bodies of waters. However you can tie it into sea or water is fine. Like I said, for all of these, as long as you can explain your rationale for why it fits, I'm good with it. So that will be August and September. But since we're taking July off from the actual make-along, I decided I wanted to do something in July that's apart from the make-along. Um, but I thought it would be a really good time to do it. And it's going to be um, a self-care summer. And I realize summer's more than just July. But, you know, the alliteration worked. And we have the month of July. So I thought it would be a good month to focus on self-care. Um, and so I'm going to be starting a thread in the Ravelry group and I will put a post in the Fiber and Dye Works group about this as well that can act as a place where you can leave comments. Um, so it's a place where we can share and talk about things that we're doing in our lives that offer small loving acts of care for ourselves. Like we always take care of other people. Like that's just sort of our, our human nature. We want to take care of other people. And especially as women and those who identify as female, like we often put ourselves last and others first. I'm not saying that men don't do that also, or people who identify as male don't do that, but it is, you know, it's been proven through studies, like women are the ones who tend to do that. And so, you know, my thought process, and some of this is just, you know, some of it's subjective and some of it's objective. Um, it's been a year. Like we've been through the last 15, 16 months. It's been hard. We've had to give up a lot of things. Things have been weird. And now we're returning to this certain level of normal, especially this summer where all these things are opening up and, you know, the precautions are, have been lowered and all that stuff. People are vaccinated and, um, that's, that comes with its own level of stress. You know, I think everybody is dealing with that a little bit differently. Um, I'm not doing too bad with it. At first it was a little weird, but now I'm feeling okay with it, you know. But there's still a level of stress with it. Like, is it going to keep going? Is it, like, am I going to be prepared, like, if I have to, you know, take more precautions? Like, I don't know. I'm sure you're all aware of the different things that you think about. And hopefully we're all enjoying the fact that things have lightened up, but I still think it's important to be mindful of what we each need <laughs> as individuals um, and to cut ourselves a little bit of slack when we need to. I mean, that was important while we were in all the lockdown stuff, but I think it's still important now as we're trying to adjust and adapt and figure out what our own boundaries are within the larger societal boundaries that are being put on us or asked of us, right? So I would just like to have this thread and this post open as a place for us to share. Like, what are we doing this summer? Or what are we doing to have fun? Not just as families or with friends or whatever, but like, what are we doing for ourselves? Like just little moments of taking care of ourselves, maybe doing little tasks that we've wanted to do. Like I wanted to warp my loom for weeks and weeks and I haven't. And I finally took that time this morning to do it. Same way in my bedroom yesterday when I was organizing, I, I have, um, okay. I, I know I've shared this with you before. If you've watched around the holidays, especially when the Christmas trees to be in here in the, in the porch room, um, above these doors over here are, is the shelf. And after Christmas, I would always take this garlandy stuff um, that we have and that we put on the tree. Usually I put it up on the shelf and then I keep out like, I don't know, a dozen, a dozen and a half of my favorite ornaments and I hang them on there and I leave them there all year. And I love seeing them because they're my favorite things, you know, some of my favorite things to look at and I only get to see them for one month out of the year otherwise. So I've always done that, except this year I couldn't because the tree wasn't out here. There was no reason to put that garland back up there because Bill's the only one out here and he does not care if that's up there. And so I kept some of the ornaments out, I think maybe a dozen. 
I, I kept them out and I was going to find some place to put them in the bedroom where I could see them since that seems to be my my spot <laughs> you know my side of the bed and I just hadn't I hadn't I couldn't figure out how to make it work in a way that I would enjoy it in a way that Bill wouldn't just roll his eyes and think whatever why do we have Christmas ornaments in the bedroom I'm sorry I'm spitting at you now and so finally yesterday I took a moment and I thought you know what there's these two um, there was a, there used to be a, a curtain rod like at the halfway point in the window for like two layers of curtains there hasn't been curtains in there since before I was here but the little things that held that curtain rod were still there so they stick out from the window frame I thought you know what I'm gonna crochet a long chain that will span that and I can attach them attach it to those two little doodads and then I'm gonna hang my ornaments on there and that's what I did and I'm so happy with it. I mean, it took me all of maybe, probably not even a half hour to do that. But it has brought me such joy every time I look at it. You know, so those are the kind of little things I'm talking about. Maybe it's not even crafting. Maybe it's just, you know, taking a half hour out of your day or even 10 minutes to just sit and like do some deep breathing. Um, I have the Asana Rebel app on my phone which I, I downloaded on an impulse and I think it was, I don't know how much it was a year, but I paid for it. But they have these really good meditations. I really enjoy the meditations. And so I will do the, the legs up the wall thing. A lot of times I'll do it after I take a shower. I just get my yoga mat out and I put it on the floor and I lay on it with my feet like up on the wall, um, which is very relaxing in and of itself. And then I'll put on a meditation none of them are longer than 10 minutes and it's just it's so calming and relaxing and it just it makes me feel so much better and I can go about my day without a whole lot of investment beyond that so anyway I just thought it would be really fun to take this middle month of the summer and share those kind of things with each other um, and just get refocused and regrounded um, especially you know, summer can sometimes be really busy for other reasons. You know, if kids are home. I mean, I know kids have been home, but maybe your kids did get to go back to school and now they're still home for the summer or whatever. Um, just share. So check for the thread or that post, whichever place works best for you. And, you know, we can just take a virtual breather together through the month of July. And I am actually hoping to also schedule a couple of Zoom chats. Um, as a tie-in with this self-care summer where we can just kind of get together. We could knit or craft or just chatter or whatever. Um, I want to do at least two. I will do one in an evening and one during a day. Um, I don't know that I will do them on the weekends though, mainly because my internet connectivity up here stinks in the weekends. Like I was on a Zoom thing last night and it cut out like half dozen times in two hours. It was very frustrating. I'm better off doing it during the week. So hopefully that'll work for you guys, um, but stay tuned. I will put that information again in those two places. Um, I'll also mention it in my newsletter. If you're, again, please subscribe to the newsletter. That's a great place to get this kind of info. Okay, so that's <laughs> everything about that. Um, shock news, real quick here. Again, I said this stuff up at the top of the show. But I'm extending the Summer Solstice 20% off coupon just for you guys, for the podcast viewers. I'm not advertising that extension anywhere else. I'm not even going to put it in the show notes. So if you're watching and you're hearing it and you're seeing it down here at the bottom of the screen, you get to use it if you would like to. Um, it is Summer Solstice 20. It's 20% off almost everything except the Winter Magical stuff. Um, mini skeins and gift certificates. Everything else that 20% will work for. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing, the Winter Magical Holiday Countdown sets, they're going to be up for pre-order through the end of June. I'm probably going to take them down after that. I thought I might leave them up longer, but I think I'm going to take them down at the end of June. I may end up, I usually have some extra sets closer, like after they get shipped out, I have ones that I've dyed extras of. So there could be a few in the shop closer to the end of the year, but don't count on it. Like if you want one, you want to be sure to have one, order it now. That's the best way to do that. 
and then um, in the spirit of cutting myself some slack and doing some self-care that is the reason I am postponing the next shop update to Friday July 9th instead of this weekend um, I just want to have the time to ad adequately prepare I lost a lot of work time over the weekend which is a long story and I'll probably talk about it a little bit here but in 10% but um yeah, I just want to have enough time because I have certain things that I definitely want to have in the shop at the next update, and I want to have the time to do it right. So, July 9th, next update. It'll be a Friday evening, so it'll be a 5 p.m. update. Let's move on and wrap this up. Um, the favorite things that are bringing me joy this week, basically, I'm going to sound sort of repetitive here, but my favorite thing this week is coming to a point of being able to say, I need to cut myself some slack and give myself permission to just step back and and take care of me. I, I preach this a lot to other people and I need to remember to take that advice myself. Um, this weekend though, it sort of came to a head because I had had plans, like plans with a capital P, of what I wanted to get done this weekend, work-wise and personally. And pretty much first thing Saturday, my time just kept getting interrupted with things that were outside of my control. Some of it was stuff that like Bill had taken one of the bikes out that he was working on and he got stranded. It wouldn't start. So I had to go pick him up, bring him back. We had to load, you know, connect the trailer up because this big trailer I can't do well by myself. I probably could. It would just take me way longer than if both of us are doing it. So I had to get the trailer hooked up, go down, pick up the bike, come home. That was in the morning. That took like an hour and a half. <laughs> And then later in the afternoon, after you worked on it, and he's like, I've got it fixed. I'm going to take it out for a ride. The same thing happened. <laughs> and we had already unhooked the trailer because he was certain it was fixed. So I had to go get him <laughs> again. Come back, get the trailer, hook it up, go get the bike. And pick up our Chinese food in the process of all that. I was, like, I was so frustrated by the end of that day. And, um, yeah, it was just like, my day was so choppy because of all of that. Even if I had started to die, it would have been really messed up because I would have been having to stop in the middle of a die batch and like that would have been bad. So I was feeling frustrated. I was starting to feel resentful that like this was happening because the bike that he's working on wasn't working right and blah, you know, how you get. Yesterday, I finally got to a point where I was like, I just need to go with it. Like the universe is clearly telling me that this is not what I need to be doing this weekend. Um, step back, regroup, and think about what's important, Lisa. Think about, yeah, like what deserves my attention and energy right now, and what does not deserve my frustration and my resentment. And like my family, my husband, I love my husband. I don't want to feel frustrated or resentful about things with him, you know? It's not his fault that this bike was acting up and that, like, I mean, he knows bikes. He's really good at this stuff. So if something's repeatedly breaking down, it's obviously something that's a challenge for him. And I need to be there. I want to be there. I don't need to. It's my choice. I choose to be there and be his support and his help. That's, I feel like that is my role as his partner in life. I take that on myself willingly. Um... And so I have to be willing to give him the attention and the energy that that takes to do that without allowing myself, without falling into the trap of also feeling resentful and frustrated and angry because my time is being impinged upon, infringed upon. I don't know. Um, so I had to like talk to myself <laughs> and have that, you know, get rid of that. Um, I did have a little mini meltdown yesterday, not like an angry one, but like I was talking to him and I just said, look, I'm just trying to figure out how best to regroup what I do and how I do it that will work with our schedule based on things that are going on in our life, like you retiring next year and, you know, your needs for having me help you on the weekends. I mean, this is not a new thing. Like, this has been an ongoing cycle. Like, I get to this point, it's like, oh, I need to be available on the weekends because that's when he can do things and I need to be able to help, you know, and then I forget that and just, you know, lather and repeat. <laughs> So, and he didn't really have anything to say, like, he was just listening, and that's about as supportive as he gets. He's not overly empathetic as a, a person in general, like, he's very even-keeled, and 
but he listened and that's like I know he's hearing me and he understands that I'm trying to do my best and he he responds to that with things like well that just means that when I retire you need to work 80 hours a week instead because <laughs> he's a smart ass also anyway so after that it was like it felt so much better after I was able to just tell him all those things and get that out and then I just chose I set aside my my original plans and I did a whole bunch of other small tasks that I've been needing to get done or wanting to get done and haven't had the time I just took the time yesterday like hanging those things up in the bedroom I organized my bookshelf that was over on my side of the bed look my spot you know I have new things out I put some other things away I put some of my pretty dishes and boxes that I have that I like to keep things in they're out now where I can see them and enjoy them and then I took some time and I I did my manicure again and I painted my toenails and I did a facial and I just showered and then I got on my yoga mat and put my feet up the wall and meditated and rested for it was wonderful and then I had a zoom book club last night I'm doing sort of a book club slash class for women who run with the wolves I know you've heard me mention this book before I have never been able to read through the whole thing though like I don't know why I've just had a hard time reading through it so then I found this this six week book club for it and signed up to do that and um, the first meeting was last night so I was ready for that I sat down I made sure I ate my dinner early enough that I was not you know rushing to get to the class I could get there early and you know be calm and then after and that was fun it was a really good class I'm looking forward to the next five weeks I also now have to read three chapters of this book before next Sunday um, and then afterwards I it was nine o'clock when it was done and Emma and I were gonna do a fire outside because of the for the solstice she was sound asleep <laughs> she's been working a lot and she was really tired so she was sound asleep. So I went outside and I did my own fire because Bill was like okay night see you in the morning <laughs> because he's an early to bed guy as I usually am too but I was gonna do my fire and I was so glad I did I sat out there for a couple of hours and just enjoyed the fire I looked at the moon it was clear stars were out there were a couple bats I love watching the bats at night it was a really nice close to my weekend a nice way for me to um, observe the solstice and I needed that so that's my tale. Um, hopefully maybe that's a little inspiring for you to find your own ways to take care of yourself and, you know, cut yourself some slack. You know, it, it never does me any good when I'm trying to get things done and I just feel like I'm banging my head against the wall. It always feels so much better when I step back and I just realize, okay, what's going on? What is the universe trying to tell me here? Like, I need to consider other options. It always works better that way. And you know now I'm it's Monday and I can get back into the swing and here I have time to sit out here and podcast and then you know I can move on with life so it's all good I hope you'll be able to take some self-care time not just in July and not just right now but always like just try to remember that that's important it's as important as taking care of anyone else it's even more important you know it's why they tell you Put your oxygen mask on before you help someone else get their oxygen mask on. It works better that way. You need the oxygen. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close there and get this edited and hopefully up soon so that you can see about the coupon if you want to use that. Um, and I will talk to you again somewhere in early July. Um, I will podcast before I do the shop update in July for sure. And then I will also have the prize winners for the um, fauna section of the make-alongs whenever I podcast the first time in July. So you can watch for that too. As always, I love to see your comments. Feel free to comment on this video. Um, post in the Ravelry group. Post on my blog. You're welcome to do that. Um, if you ever have any questions that you want to contact me directly, I'm always open to emails, fibernymph at gmail.com. 
and I just want to wish you a lovely rest of your June. If you're here in the U.S. and you're going to be celebrating the 4th of July, have fun, be safe, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.